Uh, let's go ahead and uh, jump into this. This is kind of a different topic for Rupus, and uh, the topic is building renovation. So this is renovating surfaces on commercial and residential buildings. Uh, my name is Jason Rose. We also have some special guest speakers for this topic today. We have with us um, Eugene and Eric from the Netherlands. We have Fabrizio from Italy. Uh, and also running the background for us, the background controls is Mattia in Italy as well. So that is our team uh, presenting this topic for you today. And um, we will jump right into this. So our webinar today it has um, a topic about building renovation. So the first thing we will be presenting to you as we flow through this information is we're going to talk about the building surfaces and the degradation to those surfaces. So we will just explain what surfaces we are talking about and what we mean by degradation. We also will review some current fixes for this problem. So this is a presentation about the current methods that are being used by people to resolve this degradation on building surfaces. And then of course, we'll present the Rupus Bigfoot solution. We'll explain what our approach is to renovating and fixing and restoring these surfaces on, on building facades. We will discuss our features and benefits and why our solution is better than some of these other solutions that are available. We will also go over the system approach. As you know, Rupus is very uh, firm on a system approach. So there are components that work in synergy with each other and we will talk about that application to restore these surfaces. And then we have a very easy to use presentation of those components in a kit form. So um, this will be a way to get all of the items needed to restore these surfaces. Um, and then we'll have a brief discussion about surface maintenance. And once you've restored these surfaces on the buildings, uh, what can we do to maintain them uh, over a long period of time? And finally, at the end, we will present to you how to get started. So if you like what you see, we will share with you how to get started with this solution. And before we jump into this, I just want to say that this is um, a crazy time for all of us around the world, and we appreciate you taking the time to um, use your time effectively and actually learn something new. And this is um, something that could be a great opportunity for business people and even automotive detailers, uh, another opportunity to use your skills in, in another way. Uh, so this is a very relevant topic. So let's go through these building materials. So firstly, we're talking about garage doors. So uh, some of these garage doors are metal and they're painted and they degrade over time. We're also talking about window frames that are on residential and commercial buildings, as well as the siding and the facades of buildings themselves. Also, the entrances into buildings have features that are sometimes painted and um, could degrade and lose their color. We also are talking about marquee signs and signage. So many, many businesses have signage on the outside of their building that, that describes their brand and their company name. And many of these surfaces are painted materials that over time de degrade. And then finally, there's power coated materials. So fencing and um, walkways and things like that where there are metal materials that are powder coated and this surface fades over time. There's also plastic and aluminum materials that are found on the outside of residential and commercial buildings. Uh, this happens to be a window frame that is a plastic um, or aluminum material that is also painted. So it's painted in color and this surface can uh, degrade over time. There's another material called high pressure laminate or HPL. And this is another surface that is found on the outside of windows, on the outside of buildings. And some uh, signage material is, is made from these. So this is a, another 
material that we're talking about as a way to renovate the appearance of a building. Now, getting back to garage doors, this is a very faded, dull uh, garage door that has faded over time. And you may or may not see, but in the lower right-hand corner of this picture, uh, there is a faded car to go with the uh, faded door. So these two uh, apparently have aged together and uh, they look very similar. So opportunity to renovate both the car and the door. Now the signage we are talking about are these, this is obviously the Rupus headquarters in Italy. Uh, but we're talking about many different shapes and sizes of signage that commercial buildings use and many opportunities here to shine those up and make them look better. Uh, so with that, I'm going to turn this um, over to Fabrizio in Italy, and he will uh, go over some uh, uh, specifics about the problem. Hello everyone, welcome and uh, good afternoon from, from Milan, Italy. Yeah, uh, now Jason did a perfect introduction. We are talking about materials that are outside, are, they stay outdoor and over time they start to fade, fade, uh, fade out. Why? Uh, well, let's think about our car. We have seen before a very small piece of a car that was oxidated. Uh, and consider we normally, our car remains half of, the, of its time outside and half of its time inside the garage. Uh, but if we consider garage doors, if we consider uh, fences, um, windows, they stay outside 365 days a year, 24 hours. Uh, always, they stay outside all the time. What happens? It happens that the color tends to fade down. Why? Because we have pigments. These pigments are destroyed by the action of the, of the sunlight, of the UV rays that we see in the lower line, in the second line. Uh, these plastics uh, and the, the paints as well, they are made of polymers. They are big molecules. The sun arrives, brings a lot of energy, and these molecules, they break down. They just they just break down, they, they lose the flexibility. When they're new, they're flexible, they can move. Uh, consider we have not only UV, we also have uh, uh, temperature that is changing. And so when uh, we have a sunny day, we have uh, like 20, 25 degrees Celsius, uh, everything will expand. Then in the night, the temperature goes, out, goes down, the material shrink down. When the material is new, when our coating is new, it can move and it can follow these movements. But when the time goes and uh, the sun is hitting, the material becomes more and more rigid. It's not able to follow these movements and it will start cracking. It will start to lack gloss, to lo lose gloss. Why? Because we are, we are, the, the, the superficial layer is just destroying. It's just uh, wearing out, so we lose uh, this this very superficial layer, um, and over time, uh, a lot of oxidized material piles up on the top of the of the of the layer, and uh, we don't see the, the the original material. We see something different, something more dull, something less shiny, less beautiful to see. We have lost appearance. We have lost beauty. Our our exter exterior um, materials, they start to look very dull and not very beautiful. So consider we have uh, this colored surface, it's a painting, it's a, a film, it's a, a plastic layer. What happens? We have uh, temperature changing, we have wind, we have rain, we have snow, but most of all we have sun. Sun is hitting the surface, is giving energy to this surface. They don't need it. We know our, our skin is deteriorated by the sun. Well, why not the skin of a window, of a door, of a garage door, of an entrance door? We have bird, bird drops. Uh, that's acid, that's very aggressive, that will go inside, like, just like it does on a car paint. It does the same on a furniture paint or on a <clears throat> window paint, it will happen the same. And then we touch it and we clean it. Sometimes we clean and use some, dirt, some wrong material, too aggressive acid uh, 
soaps or detergents, very alkaline, they will go and slowly, slowly, they start to corrode. They start to eat, to bite and eat the, 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 the superficial material that we have on top of our, uh, of our, of our surface. We might, uh, not intentionally, but we, mi we might hit the surface with uh, some objects. They will crack the, the superficial material. So we have a lot, a whole lot of, of a lot material that, that can uh, destroy or wear out the superficial layer of our surface. This all together, we can do several things. We will see it in the next slide, but we need to fix, we need to fix the, product, the problem. How can we do it? Well, we have several choices. We have cleaning. Uh, consider a car. We clean the car every week, every two weeks. I'm, I don't clean it often, but once a month I do it. When do we clean our windows or our, even less, our uh, exterior doors, our uh, window closet, the, the outside, no? Probably once a year when it's a lot, once a year. Or we can repaint it or we can uh, do other things like, for example, I, I don't see it coming. Oh, yeah, act with some nano coating. That, that's a possibility. We have others uh, like wrapping, covering, covering the, or replace, just replace, of course. Or we can also do nothing. That's also an option. Let's do one by one all these different options. And let's start from cleaning. Well, cleaning, it's quite a messy process. We need a lot of towels. We probably need a lot of detergents, different bottles, uh, clean the towels. Uh, it's, it's sometimes dangerous. But what we are doing is not really to restore something. We're just doing some very mild maintenance. We're cleaning it. Of course, we don't leave uh, the bird drop to act on the surface. We don't leave time to acid rain uh, to stay on the surface. But eventually, we're not restoring anything. We're just keeping it clean, better than nothing. But the, the results will not last very long. After a few weeks, they will start to be dirty again. They will start to be covered with some layers of dust, of acids, of, of a lot of material that can have some acid and corrosive action to the surface. And many times, as I said, we use some wrong detergents and they will dry out the surface even more. So we finish that we are worse than when we started. Another option that we could consider is to repaint. What well, repainting is uh, I would say the best option in terms of final result, but it's definitely very long and very expensive. We cannot do it every year because after five years, we might have bought another, a, a, new, a, a new object, a new manufact. So, uh, I, and also I need a lot of skills. I need to know what I'm doing. I need to send. How to send, it's not easy. Uh, there's risk of delaminating. Why? Because if I don't sand properly, my previous layer might be closed, might be too compact, and the following layer is not able to get good connection and good adhesion with the previous layer. So after some weeks, after some days, I might have that uh, in some areas, in some corners, in some edges, the paint, the new paint start to detach from the previous. And also I need to pay attention. I need to cover and mask all the trims, all the, the plastic pieces. I must pay a lot of attention on that. This will take time. Uh, this will take money. So altogether, uh, this is something very painful. Uh, paint texture is also an issue. I need to make sure that the where I repaint will have the same texture of the surrounding areas. And many times, in um, where I have edges, where I have uh, some 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 corners, I might have some cracking because I apply too much material or too few, and this can create some tensions inside the paint uh, layer and this tension we might eventually end up with some crackings. So this is, uh, repainting is 
to my opinion, the best one. But I, can, I should do it only when it's really worn out. But today we will tell you something to prevent, which is much less expensive, much less time consuming, and that allow you to prevent the need of repainting a lot of money, a lot of time, and a lot of knowledge. Something very easy and something very quick and fast. Uh, there's also the possibility to use a nano coating. This is very fashion today, very, very uh, on, the, on the hype, but of course, I need to prepare before I go. If I don't have a perfect preparation and the perfect preparation I can get only by polishing, I will have a poor bonding because I might have some dust, some dirt, something on the surface that prevent the, the, the adhesion of the nano coating. And nevertheless, the amount of material that I leave on the surface is so low, is so, is so insufficient that the results again will be low, short term. And it's also very expensive. You know, 30 milliliters of this material would be like $100, something very expensive. Uh, and also when you go and you want to do some maintenance, this very hard layer of material will be difficult to repair, will be hard to work on. So you will need to sand, you will need, and it will become really very painful again. Uh, these are the the needs, the, the, the material, the processes we can do. Now, uh, what if we try to do some of them, but we don't have the right knowledge, if we don't have the right skills, we could uh, end up with some coating failure. These are some examples. Uh, you can see some crackling, some, some crackings on the right part of the picture. And this is something that comes from a non-perfect application of the paint, non-perfect preparation of the substrate, uh, non-perfect execution of the job. So all this together makes the repainting quite uh, problematic. I don't remember, Jason, is, if these are up to me or, uh, oh no, yeah, this is, these are up to me again. This is wrapping. Wrapping is uh, a very long process. Wrapping means taking a film of plastic and uh, sticking it to the, to the surface. Very expensive, of course. Many times not necessary because we are not arrived, this is just like painting, expensive, time consuming, labor consuming, very long job, a very expensive job, these, these layers are very expensive. Uh, and also we don't have a final solution to the job because over time we might have a delamination. So the, 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 um, this film, which might not be perfectly sticked to the surface, could come out again. And so we are bad, we're worse than when we started doing the job. Of course, we have another option, replace. Replace is probably one of the most definitive kind of jobs, but this is, yes, very, very expensive because we have to buy a new material. We have to substitute the old window with a new one, the old fence with a new one. Labor intensive, time intensive, but Expand, very, very expensive. Uh, and also, of course, what can we do with the old one? So also from the environmental point of view, we have a lot of rubbish that we have to, to get rid somehow. And this for the environment is not really a good solution. But uh, of course, this often not necessary. Why? Because only when we have the the, the, the substrate, which is completely worn out, then we don't have any other solution that substituting it. Uh, do nothing is also one quite often, especially probably here in Italy, one, one quite often solution, but it does not solve the problem at all. In a few years, uh, this degradation will, will become faster and faster and the substrate will become poorer and poorer. Eventually, my house, which uh, which could be sold for a certain amount of money, it will lose value very quickly because my garage door is completely crack cracked, my entrance door is dull and ugly to see, my windows are peeled off, and so on and so forth. And in the, in the end, 
my my house is not beautiful to see. So this is absolutely, of course, not a solution of the problem, not at all. So we are going now to see the Rupert's Bigfoot solution. Uh, what I can tell you is this is a new business for many of us. It's a, a quite well-known business in some countries of Europe, especially one which is Holland. That's why today uh, we have with us Eric, which is our technician, our application engineer in the Benelux. And uh, he is one of the most expert technicians for these kind of applications. So I will hand the voice over to him because he will teach you, he will explain you how these kind of jobs are done in, uh, in Holland and how easy it is to do these kind of jobs and to restore the perfect appearance to a worn out surface. Uh, for myself, we will, I will now take care of questions and answers. So if you have any question down in the bottom line, there's a Q&A box. You can click there, write a, a question. I will answer to some of them directly. Some of them I will keep for the end of, the, um, of this presentation. And we will discuss all together with Jason, Eugene, and Eric your questions. Eric, are you with us? Thank you for the introduction. Uh, my name is uh, Eric. Uh, from Holland and I will tell you a little bit about the uh, process uh, and the benefits of this system. Um, the machine polishing of the surfaces uh, Fabrizio was just talking about is the solution Rupus is uh, uh, developing, uh, has developed and uh, it's because of the, uh, uh, the polishing will only take off the uh, uh, degenerated uh, top layer. And then uh, underneath it will uh, appear just like it was in, uh, when, it, when it was new. And the Bigfoot system is a polishing system with a large orbit. And that's amazing uh, because uh, you don't ha have any heat and you don't have any holograms and no danger for the uh, surface. So it will give the, sh the original shine it had uh, when it was uh, placed. Um, it's very simple and easy to use, uh, fast, uh, and very durable. Uh, the durability of the surface that is polished is determined uh, of the quality of the surface. That's If you have a very low quality surface, uh, the de de degeneration will start earlier. So video will start you will see some objects we uh, polished in the last few years this is an entrance of a building you see the de degeneration and after we've polished it it's like new it's like a mirror again this is a painted surface uh, with uh, scratches from from bicycles and you can also uh, polish them out for this is a powder coated material, uh, a fence, and you can polish it. This uh, was only done in one step. And you see the difference between uh, the dull uh, before and the shiny after. Uh, so now we're gonna talk about the features and the benefits of the system. It's a very easy system to use. This is one of the projects I followed. Uh, this is a... a a window cleaner building, a building from a window cleaner. And after this test, he started to uh, share this uh, knowledge and uh, started with it. Uh, this is a school building and uh, powder coated material. And you see it, it's brand new after polishing it. Uh, and this is another picture. Uh, the hor horizontal uh, 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 surfaces will weather faster than uh, the vertical. So this is a very nice picture because you see it's like new. It's a, it's a plastic, uh, the dark thing is a plastic uh, surface. This is the HPL, the high pressure laminate. Uh, this is a building uh, uh, of a sports facility and they wanted to uh, uh, renew every uh, HPL uh, and after I did the test, they uh, just polished every everything and they didn't uh, have to replace any any of them. So 
it is uh, very low uh, in costs. And this is a gar garage door that's uh, uh, also powder coated material, metal. And metal is very uh, <coughs> hard to paint, especially when it touches the ground, the paint will go, will go off. Uh, with polishing, we made it back uh, to normal, to, to, uh, to the original. So it's, uh, it's shiny and new again. But the durability of this uh, 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 end result uh, is the same as it was uh, when it's new. Uh, and it will be even a little bit longer, but I will uh, come to that later in this presentation. Um, this is the a plastic window frame, uh, a colored plastic fr window frame. And it's uh, a window frame of uh, the Rupus headquarters in, uh, in uh, Italy. And we polished it in uh, one step, only one step. So, and this window frame we could do in very simple uh, steps. Uh, maybe in about 10 minutes we've done a window frame. Uh, for this process, yeah, it's only, uh, you only need a few components. And all uh, Jason already uh, told us, uh, all the components are in the box. We will later uh, present. Uh, so if you want to make your customers happy, uh, you just uh, have to uh, buy the box and uh, follow some little training. Uh, it's very easy to learn if you know how to polish a car. This is even easier than uh, polishing a car. The well-engineered tools, yeah, it's Rupus. Uh, Rupus has the best tools in the world, I think. Uh, durability of the tool, but also the vibration of the tool. Yeah, you need uh, far less uh, time than uh, all the other solutions uh, Fabrizio told, told you about. Uh, it's just uh, after the cleaning, you just polish it and then it's uh, finished and it's and mostly it's in, into one step or maybe two steps. Um, <clears throat> it's not very aggressive for the, for the surface because you're, the polishing is a very light way uh, of uh, taking away the degenerated layer and uh, the layer underneath it is as new. So it will not be uh, hard on the, the surface. Uh, uh, is very uh, is not sensible, se sensitive for uh, weather changes. So, um, of course, when it's very cold or very very uh, rainy or very hot, it's not uh, uh, ideal. But uh, it's not very sensitive. So you can uh, you have a very long uh, season outside to polish. Okay, now to the application uh, of it all. Now, it's the same surface as uh, you saw before. Uh, underneath, you see the time. So this step, uh, if, if the surface is degenerated for about two to five years, uh, and then you put, if you, you do this maintenance step uh, with the Bigfoot system. Uh, one step uh, will be uh, sufficient to uh, restore faded colors, and it will uh, restore light porous surfaces. So. It's a maintenance step you can do over and over again. Uh, the advantage of this uh, to do this more often than now is because when the surface is smooth, it will uh, degenerate slower than a, a rough, a roughened uh, surface. Now, the products we used is uh, uh, one of the newer products of uh, Rupus. Uh, it re removes uh, it's UniProtect and it re removes uh, light weathering. Uh, it will give uh, back uh, uh, the surface uh, its original color and uh, the charism, the charism of the of the surface. So it will uh, totally take it back to uh, the original. Uh, we use a wool pad, the yellow wool pad. It's got uh, very long hairs, uh, uh, wool, wool uh, and it grabs the contamination of the surface and it holds it. And it's available in different sizes uh, because we have a lot of different machines. Uh, so for the very large objects, uh, you can use the biggest uh, pad, 118 millimeters. And uh, for very small objects, 
like uh, statues or uh, maybe gates with uh, small uh, edges, uh, you can use the 40 millimeters uh, on another tool. If you go to the more moderate uh, and severe oxidation, so we've neglected the uh, maintenance for a longer time, approximately around 10 years, and uh, then the surface is uh, more uh, contaminated and uh, the porous layer will be thicker and there will be some scratches you need to remove. The blue wool and the DA cores will uh, go deeper into the uh, weathered materials and uh, grab them more um, because the uh, DA cores compound is uh, much more coarse than the uh, Unoprotect. And the wool pad has uh, two lengths of uh, wool and it will grab the uh, contamination more than, uh, than the yellow wool pad. Uh, after the first step, you can decide to use the Unoprotect uh, to make the surface more shiny and, uh, and it will leave uh, a little bit of protection layer also, the Unoprotect. It will make the surface more smoothen and uh, dirt will not uh, stick to it uh, that fast. If uh, your surface is even more degenerated, uh, and then, now I'm talking, uh, this door is, uh, uh, they've done nothing with this door for about 35 years. So it will look like this. Uh, then you have to do uh, a more severe step. Uh, and then you uh, start with uh, uh, X-cut, and that's a, a sanding material and you can use it on the same uh, machine. So it's all in one machine. Uh, with the X-Cut, uh, it removes uh, heavy weathering, uh, but also, also uh, light scratches it will remove. If you've done this, the result will be it, uh, that the surface will be uh, dull or matte. And then you have to polish it with the next step, and that's the, uh, the DA course with the blue wool pad. And then you finish again with the UnoProtect for the uh, highest shine and the protection layer. Okay, yeah, so but... what we'll do now is we'll show a video of this process that Eric has described. And um, Eric, let me do the voiceover because I think that was okay. the technical problem. So. Yeah. Uh, let me just talk over the video, but we will show you this visually. We'll walk you through these steps. And by we, I mean Eric will walk you through these steps. <laughs> <laughs> so here's that same garage door. And the choices are to paint it or, you know, replace it. But as you can see, we're going to completely restore this with the Bigfoot system. So the first step is to clean the surface and to remove the dirt and debris and things that have bonded. Uh, and then the second step is to, because of the severity, it's to use the X-cut sanding disc. This is done damp with a little bit of water. And this will help to bite through that oxidation material, loosen it up and make it easy to remove. And then once you've sanded this with the X-cut, we move to the compounding step, and this is with that blue wool rupus pad and uh, the blue capped DA coarse liquid. In this case, it was a second step polish, but the product that Eric had mentioned, the Uno Protect, would be a great second step because it adds protection. And through these steps, um, which are very easy, uh, you can completely restore the surface uh, from old looking to brand new looking. So with that, um, let me just get myself on camera here again. And what we'll show you now, if, Eric has done a fantastic job of walking you through the, the application. All the items that Eric showed you in the video and on the slides are available in this one box. So this is one part number, one kit, one price tag. You purchase this item and you have everything that you need in there uh, with the exception of one thing, which is water. 
you know, water is not in this kit, but you will need a little bit of water for the sanding on severe surfaces. But this particular kit is intended for large flat surfaces. And this has our Duetto tool, which is a large orbit polisher, has five inch diameter pad on this tool. So this is what Eric used in the video, and it is for going over large uh, surfaces. It has the tool, it has the wool pads, it has the two liquids, the DA course, and the Uno Protect as a second step, or could be used as an only one step. It has microfiber towels, and it has the X-cut sanding discs in the 3000 grit and 2000 grit range. Um, also with the claw pad uh, cleaning tool there, all in the nice uh, sustainer box. So this one kit, one part number is all you need to get started on this kind of um, restoration. Now, the second kit available, very similar to the first one I've described, but the tool is different and the pad diameters are different. So this is intended for small areas. And this is a smaller tool it's called our mini, and the part number here is the LHR75E box. So the word box is in the part number there. And this, is got, this has the same items as the previous kit I described. However, it just has the smaller tool with the smaller pad diameters. So these are two different kits available. Both of them will get you started in with this program. Now, once you have restored the surface, made it brand, brand new again. This item here, the M707 Carnuba High Gloss Protective Shampoo is an example of one of the items you can use to now maintain that surface over time. So with this particular product, we are cleaning the dirt off the surface. It's simply washed on and rinsed and wiped off. And then you're also laying down some additional protection. So every time you clean the surface, you are also adding protection. So this is a fabulous item to get as a maintenance item on these surfaces once you have restored them. So how do we get started? Um, I'm going to turn this over to our colleague Eugene, uh, also in the Netherlands, and he will talk to you uh, briefly about the business side of this opportunity. Okay, good afternoon for the Europeans uh, amongst us. Uh, thank you for all uh, your presentations. And uh, you have just seen a lot of application opportunities, I think. And uh, like said by, uh, by, by Jason, I would like to focus a little bit more on the business possibilities we see. I'd like to share that with you. We have been busy, like Eric said, some uh, maybe two years already uh, with this system, creating it from a market demand. Uh, there were relatives and friends who said, can you do what you do on your cars? Can you do this also on buildings? Why, why not? Let's try. So that's how we got acquainted with the system. And since that time, uh, maybe two years now, every third building I've seen has surfaces that can best be renovated by the Bigfoot system. So these are really opportunities I see constantly uh, they vary from, like said, the window frame, the fences, uh, and even the signages on buildings. We can do so much. Uh, anyhow, um, the renovation system, the Bigfoot renovation system is very safe for the applicator. It's an easy to process uh, system. Eric has explained that very well. And it's also very, very uh, fine and delicate for the surface. It's very, it doesn't treat the surface intensively. So it's a very uh, nice and easy way to process. What we do is to unleash the fresh paint from, uh, from the, the, the contamination and the, the weird out layer. The majority of the paint, like Eric said, rests, stays. So that means that from approximately 100 micron we, where we started with, we take off maybe five maybe six, depends on the degradation of the paint surface, of course. But we can do this many times. We can, we can repeat the process of uh, polishing many times over decades. If we do this, for example, every eight years, we have maybe 
50 years to go before we end the complete paint layer. So we can enlarge the product life cycle a long, long time and keep it very bright and brilliant. You've also seen the in-between maintenance, uh, which you can do with the Uno Protect. Uno Protect and the yellow wool is what we suggest for medium, for, for small and low wear, and can do the perfect step in between the two um, um, renovation jobs to keep the surface bright and shiny. At this moment, we are building knowledge in the Netherlands and we have several people who are applic applicators of our system and they have a big success uh, restoring uh, objects. But internationally, I think this solution is completely unknown, which to my opinion is a big chance for innovative people. And I mean innovative people, both trade and craftsmen. For example, if you are a painter or a facade cleaner, you can become a complete renovator. In every building you work on, there are additional jobs to do. So there's more work than you to do today. You leave now work to third parties or it's not done at all. That was a nice picture shown by Fabrizio, the do nothing application. That's not what we need. If you are a paint supplier, which are amongst us, of course, uh, become a solution provider. There is good business in the machine trade and, of course, the consumables. And it does not interfere with paint supplies. It's additional. It's subjects and it's, it's objects that you would not consider to paint. This is a better solution if the paint layer is quite in a good condition below the wear. The application itself is, has an extreme long season, like Eric said. Every hour of the working day can be used. It's not like a paint job where you have to be very limited in when do I apply my paint because you cannot work in dampy conditions. This you can start from 7 in the morning till 9 in the evening. Only extreme weather conditions will have to be avoided. That's the only thing you have to take care of. In this moment, now I have to look a little bit more serious. In this moment, we are all in a situation that we have and are facing uh, contact uh, restrictions because of the corona crisis. These can and will affect our indoor jobs. If a painter has to work indoors, he can have contact with people. So there is a lot of measurements to be taken care of and maybe sometimes a job cannot be finished at all. This Bigfoot polishing systems for construction can enlarge and widen your outdoor season. It can be an ideal winter and autumn job. That to say. So yep. if you are enthusiastic and you want to get started on the following slide, Jason will give you all the contact data. And what I like to add to this is that we are so much willing and able to train everybody out there to make the best result because every new step has to be applied uh, from the bottom up. And that's where Rupert stands for, not only on a webinar, but also face to face. So please, Very Jason, good. take over. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Eugene. And, uh, you know, it, it give, he mentioned, Eugene mentioned the, the sign of the times right now. And this is a great opportunity because one of the survival mechanisms for businesses is to diversify and this is an opportunity for diversification. So with that, how do we get started? As we mentioned earlier, the option of these two kits is available to you. The LHR-12E box, which has the Duetto polisher in there, that is for large surfaces. The LHR-75E box is uh, has the mini tool for small surfaces and all the components needed to get the job done are in this kit. So with that, I also would like to announce something very exciting our company is doing um, at this time of quarantine and stay at home. The company is uh, offering an opportunity to win some fabulous prizes, but also have some fun. Uh, so many, many detailers and body shop technicians and business people are, you know, at home trying to uh, survive basically. So here we are offering a contest. And um, this is a contest that you can participate in and have an opportunity 
opportunity to win some fabulous prizes. So how do you enter this contest? Well, it's as simple as recording a very short video of yourself or a family member, um, and you can upload this video to rupususa.com at the Rupus at Home page. And what video will you be doing? It's simply a short video about you using Rupus products or systems, polishing something, but in this case, something other than a car or a boat or a motorcycle. So this is not polishing on vehicles, but polishing on other surfaces found in the home. So this could be appliances, could be furniture, could be whatever you want. We ask, um, it's a family uh, content and family contest, so no offensive objects or subjects, please. And here is a short video to describe the contest. And there you have it. Uh, so we invite you, get creative, um, produce your own short video. It does not have to be high quality. It can be very simple and easy. But we have some fantastic prizes. This is going to be just a fun contest we do. So there'll be weekly winners. So we will be selecting weekly winners of these submitted videos. And you will win new products. And these are products that have not officially been globally launched into the world yet. So you'll get a preview of some new Rupus products that are not available in many countries yet. And also some limited edition merchandise. So these are swag and other items that are specific to this contest. And so those will be the weekly selected winners. And then, of course, at the end, there'll be a, gra a grand prize winner. And this grand prize winner will get a fully loaded kit uh, with a polisher and other components and other items in this uh, very thorough uh, kit with lots of lots of items for polishing. And the polisher in this kit will be custom painted. Some of you might be aware of the contest we do at SEMA uh, with these custom painted polishers, but this particular grand prize will be a complete polishing kit with all the components, but it will also contain a custom painted Rupus Bigfoot polisher by Sun God Custom Graphics, uh, which is a very high quality custom painter. So this is a fantastic grand prize. We don't know the exact date of this grand prize selection, but going forward, we will be selecting weekly winners uh, for the contest. The where you participate is you go to rupususa.com to the Rupus at Home page and you download and submit your video there. So we invite you to do this. It's kind of a fun thing we're doing and uh, we're going to have uh, a great time with this and we look forward to getting your videos. Now, additional information about this topic, about building renovation, about the kits, you can email to this particular email address, info rupus at rupus IT. That's a direct email to get more information. Maybe you would like to look for uh, where to buy this kit in your local area, and this would be a one way to find out. We also have more information for you on our YouTube channel, uh, which is at the Rupus channel. And that is now a global channel, so you can get more information about building renovation. We will eventually put this webinar content 
on our YouTube channel. So this will then be eventually available there. So this is um, all the contact points on your screen, how to reach Rupus in many different ways. Perhaps you can take a screenshot or uh, take a picture with your phone and you'll have all the different ways that you can reach Rupus um, about our products, about education and training, about the contest, or about building renovation. So with that, I would like to open this up um, and invite my colleague Fabrizio. We will take some of your audience submitted questions now and uh, Fabrizio and I will uh, answer those for you. So what do we have? Uh, we have different questions that can be grouped in just one, which is about ma different materials. We have questions about st stainless steel, can we polish stainless steel? Can we fix UPVC panels? Can we work on Korean material? So these different questions, they all arise. Uh, UPVC window frames, um, will, they, will they yellow? Will they become yellow again? So I think either G Eric or Eugene, who, who prefers to answer us to these questions, because they are very specific about different materials. Do, do you have experience on this? Um, or, or Jason, I don't know, who, who prefers? So we're talking about Corian, um, we're Corian, talking about- Stainless steel. Stainless steel. PVC panels and windows. Eugene, you wanna crack at that one? Well, on the PVC, of course, this is one of the parts where uh, window frames are built off. You can have them uh, in a full uh, um, solid uh, plastic or you can have them painted. Both materials we can uh, easily surface uh, because you can bring them back to gloss. Um, um, uh, stainless steel, yes, we have uh, various, uh, we have knowledge of this, that we can polish stainless steel, but I think uh, we might need some other compounds, we might need uh, another pad. Um, these are the questions I uh, I am able to yeah. answer. Okay. How about Corian? Do you have any experience? Maybe Eric. Uh, stainless steel, all metals have uh, uh, will oxidate and it will give up a lot of contamination onto your pet. So sure, your sure. pet will get black and and dirty very fast. So you have to clean it uh, very often, but. In the end, you can uh, polish it. Uh, okay. And I know Corian can be polished as well because yes. our, our colleague Dylan actually, um, as part of the contest, <laughs> uh, has, has yeah. polished his uh, kitchen countertop. So uh, these same tools and same material or same co components can be used to polish Corian. I think it's very effective. So we're talking also about a very versatile process that can be applied on many different many. materials and you can work yeah. with it. But uh, there was one question which uh, I see Eugene already answered, but I want to broaden up because the, the original question was uh, how many microns will be removed approximately, but more than that, how many microns, we, we normally know that in a car we have an average of let's say a total hundred microns, but only the clear coat is about five, uh, half of that, so 50, 50 microns of, of clear coat. Of course, this is very general rule, not, not, not specific. Um, how about this? In, uh, how about these industrial, more industrial applications? Do we have more material to work on? Can we remove more material, more safer? Or it's the same as a car, we need to be careful and try to remove as lower quantity as possible? We don't have to be that careful because uh, especially powder coated materi materials uh, are groomed and then uh, there's a thick layer of color on top of it, the powder coat. It's about uh, at least 100 microns. Yeah, and it's one layer, it's not... Uh, one layer of color. Yeah. It's a colored layer, so it's not... Uh, it's not a it's not a paint layer on uh, on the collar. Yeah, it yeah. is safer than than a car than a, than a oh, car. Yes. a lot safer. We don't have the, we don't have the delicate multi layer system no. that the base no. coat clear coat on cars. Normally not. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, 
how about matte, matte surfaces? <laughs> so like 10, 20, I know this is a common question, but yeah. what can we answer? Uh, an original well, dull uh, surface will get more shiny if you polish yes. it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, most of the time that will that shine will not yeah be you equal. Appreciate it. No. Yeah. Now if it's a matte surface you you, you, you either not touch it or you take off the wear and, uh, and and accept that it will have a little bit of gloss. Uh, like on yeah. HPL, you've seen that. Uh, it will not end up having a high gloss, so you don't create high gloss material, but you will for sure have semi-gloss or uh, in between uh, in mm. between matte and, and high gloss. Yeah, Good. and it will de and it will degrade. So what you can do is to restore the color. The the wear layer you can take off. You will have the re you will have the original color, but with with too much unappreciated gloss in that case. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. How to prepare the substrate before polishing? Do we need solvents? Do we need some specific cleaners, water-based cleaners? What's the best way to clean before polishing? Eric, Eric. Uh, it has to be clean, just like a car. Uh, or another surface that you polish because every contamination on the surface will uh, disrupt your, your process. Uh, uh, it all depends on what, uh, what the contamination is. Uh, it could be chalk or it could be uh, hand grease or so it's different kind of uh, dirt that you have to clean. So generally we Same. don't need something specific. A normal no. detergent is enough to prepare. And to yes. take I think, so, yeah, just just clean it with a with a a good cleaner. Yeah, and make sure there is no wax or whatever in that cleaner. So no. it needs to not not to leave any layer. It's just cleaning it. A good, good detergent with water. Uh, we have some questions, a couple of questions that I will put together about how to choose the right pad. So we have seen, um, we have seen wool in your in our presentation. There was the choice of blue and, and yellow wool. Why wool? Why not microfiber? Why not foam? Uh, mm. What our experience is is that it is has a very wide um, application uh, range. So with the blue we can correct almost everything and with the yellow we reach a gloss level which is more than enough uh, for for these kind of exterior every op every object we have renovated with this system has a gloss level which is minimum 10 degrees better than it originally was so if the comparison for the owner of the building is oh can you bring my gloss back to what i have in the interior <laughs> oh yeah easy but we don't promise that. We say, oh, we will try. And in the end, the, the end user will be very satisfied because the gloss is always better than it used to be. Okay, very quickly, because we are running out of time. Um, There's an interesting question to me. Many times garage doors have these channels, no, that they're made of, yeah, they, they, they have different no, pieces and there's some channels inside. How can I polish inside there? Eric. I can answer that. Yes, please. Because I have a pad, and the pad is a little bit curved. Can everybody see this or not? Yes. And because of the shape of the pad, you can, uh, <coughs> you've seen it on a brown uh, garage door. You can put it in inside and you keep the rotating. It takes a little bit longer to get it uh, nice and shiny inside, but because of the shape of the pad, you can get in. Mm -hmm. smaller areas yeah and you can also use a smaller machine like an ibit nano or yes because the other, we are other machines make the same movement oh sorry but uh i i we don't have time for all of them just a couple of inform commercial informations because there's people asking about when will the new compounds be available in the market in europe and not only we are in this day well we're in this days starting the promotion. Uh, we have shipped some of these materials. So very soon they will be available on all the markets worldwide. Uh, we are shipping it. Of course, accordingly with the situation, you can all understand that it's not easy for us to operate. 
to send it abroad material. Uh, we're all in lockdown, so but, but but our production of compounds and pads has started again after the lockdown. So we have started our warehouse. We should be able to serve all the markets and all the customers very soon. Another uh, customers, another attendee was asking about when are these kits available in the market? Uh, most markets, yes. It depends on the distributor, of course. If the distributor is a good one, is a big one, they will have some of them. If not, they can just order for, from us and we will ship it to them in no time. This said, this was the last question from me. So I thank everybody and I hand the voice over to Jason. Yeah, so with that, we hope this um, content and this topic has been very helpful to you and given you ideas. Uh, we invite you to participate in our contest, submit your video on some home, home surface using the Rupus polishing system. Um, and with that, we want to say thank you for your time. And we look forward to seeing you again in a future episode of the Rupus Core Series webinars. And thank you to my colleagues. Thank Appreciate you. It.